In this video we will be looking at the 2022 Junior Cycle Business Studies exam paper. We will be looking at question 17 and in question 17 you have to complete a combined income statement and a statement of financial position. You are given the following information which is a trial balance taken from the books of Caden Limited on the 31st of December 2021. You then have to complete their income statement where they have already completed the cost of sales section for you and you have to calculate the expenses which is the income statement too part of the combined statement. After you've done this you have to complete a statement of financial position which we'll be doing later on in the video. We will begin with calculating the depreciation. They have left a box for us to do our workings on the bottom of the page here. We know that the equipment is 40,000 which we can see from our trial balance and now we have to calculate 20% of this. We will do our workings then which leaves us with 8,000 euro of depreciation for the year. For the rest of the video we will be doing the work over on the right hand side. So as I said before in the income statement 1 which is the trading account is already completed for us we have the complete income statement 2 section which is the profit and loss account. The income statement 1 calculates the gross profit or gross loss made by a business and in this case we can see that the business made a gross profit for the trading year. Our income statement 2 then on the other hand calculates the net profit or net loss so we must find that out if we're going if they're making or losing money. To begin we need the gross profit which we can see has already been given to us here on the exam paper from the income statement one. So our next step is to add in our heading which is less expenses and it's a good idea here to add it in on a different colour pen if possible. It definitely help you going forward differentiate between the headings as you go down the page. We will take a look over our trial balance sheet and see what our expenses are and start to tick them off. It's a good idea here to highlight or tick them as you go along so when it comes to the second part, part B of the question, you won't be confused as to what to add or get things mixed up. Remember here, we are looking for any type of expenses where it costs a business to sell a product or service. We can see we have such expenses here as telephone and broadband, light and heat, rent, wages, marketing expenses and our depreciation. Depreciation is recorded on the income statement as an expense as it represents how much of an asset's value has been used up for that year. So this is why we're including it here. Once we've all these expenses collected we'll record them and their values on the right hand side now entering in the type of expense it is and its value. When we've all of these things put in we'll add them up which should give us a total of 90,300. Our next step now is taking our gross profit which was given to us and taking away our expenses which we've just calculated and this leaves us with 12,700 euro. This means we've made a net profit so we'll be writing this in. We now must take away the dividends we pay to our shareholders which in this case is 10,000 euro. We can find this figure over in our trial balance. We'll add this into our statement and minus the dividends, which again is 10,000 euro, from our net profit of 12,700 euro. This leaves us with 2,700 euro. We now must add our reserves, which can be known as the profit and loss balance. Over on our trial balance, it's listed as 17,000 euro, which we'll add into our income statement now. At this point, we are adding our 2,700 euro which is the net profit after we've taken away our dividends and our opening reserves which are 17,000 euro. These two added together give us our profit and loss or closing reserve balance which is now 19,700 euro. This figure will be appearing in our statement of financial position in part B. And those are the steps involved in completing part A of this question. Part B of question 17, we must complete a statement of financial position from the figures we have just created in our trial balance. Our statement of financial position is the last step in preparing final accounts and it records a business's assets, liabilities and capital. To begin with, we will add in our headings here, which will always be the same, and the first heading we are adding in is fixed assets. So fixed assets are long term assets owned by a business. And these are usually items worth a lot of money and owned for a long period of time. 
We can see from our trial balance here, buildings and equipment fall into this. So we'll add in those values, which is 220,000 for buildings and 40,000 for equipment. These figures go into the cost columns. Next here, we must see if there is any depreciation and there is some depreciation on the equipment to be added. We did work this out in part A of the question. It tells us here at the bottom of the question that there is depreciation of 20% on equipment. We already have this worked out and this totals 8,000 euro, which is 20% of 40,000 euro, which is the cost of the equipment. We add this into the depreciation column. We now must add in our total figures into the net book value column. Since there is no depreciation on buildings, we can add in 220,000 into the net book value here, as this is what it is worth at the end of the trading period. Equipment on the other hand does have appreciation as we just worked out. So cost less depreciation equals net book value. So 40,000 cost less depreciation 8,000 is 32,000, which is our net book value. This is what the equipment is worth at the end of that trading period. We add all our costs together, our depreciation and net book value, total these up, and this is the first section complete. Under this now, we have another heading, which is called current assets. These are good assets owned by a business that can be accessed very easily. In this case, we have closing stock to the value of 5,000 euro. Closing stock is the amount of unsold goods that remain with the business. So for example, if we were selling cars and had a car left at the end of the trading period worth 5,000 euro, this is our closing stock. We also have cash in hand to the value of 5,700 euro and debtors to the value of 12,000 euro. Debtors are people that owe us money. So if you supplied another business with equipment and they were paying you in 90 days time, then this is money you're expected to receive soon from them. With all these added into our statement, we want to add all these together to get the total amount of current assets we have. And in this case, it adds up to 22,700 euro. This is our current asset section complete. Next up is our current liabilities. So current liabilities is money owed by our business falling within one year. So be on the lookout here for people we may owe money to. Sometimes you might see wages here, for example. However, in this case, we have creditors, which again is people we owe money to. And this is the value of 9,000 euro. And a bank overdraft to the value of 5,000 euro. We must add these figures together to see what the total value of our current liabilities are. And this total is 14,000 euro. The next step here is to take our current asset figure, which in this case is 22,700 euro and minus our current liabilities, which we've just worked out is 14,000 euro. This leaves us with 8,700 euro, and this is known as our working capital. So working capital is the money available for the day-to-day -day running of the business. So again here, it is current assets, less current liabilities, equals working capital. Next up, we must add our heading, which is total net assets. Total net assets is the working capital plus the total fixed assets. We already have these figures calculated and our fixed assets are 252,000 and our working capital is 8,700. These figures added together gives us the total net assets, which is 260,700 euro. We'll add these figures in. An important step to remember here is when you're adding in your fixed assets and your working capital, that you get the net book value of your fixed assets. This will give you a true figure of at the end of the trading period. So our net book value here for our fixed assets was 252,000. And again, that's the net book value. You're adding that to your working capital, which is 8,700. And that gives you a total net assets of 260,700 euro. Next up, we must find how the company is financed and see where they're getting their money from. So our next heading here is financed by. We can see here Caden Limited have an authorised share capital of 400,000, which is the amount of shares that they can sell. 
they've already issued 160,000 of these shares already so we must record this in our statement of financial position so our authorized shares which are shares we are allowed to sell is 400,000 and issued which is what we have already sold in terms of shares is 160,000 so this means Caden has sold 160,000 worth of ordinary shares to people who have invested in the company our next heading is our reserves so here we are looking to see have Caden Limited made a profit or a loss and we can find this from looking back on our income statement that we completed in part A to get our profit and loss balance Caden Limited did make a profit to the value of €19,700 and we'll add this in our next heading here is long term liabilities this is money that the business owes that they'll be paying back over a long period of time so for example here a loan or a mortgage would be examples of this and we can see from our trial balance that they have a long term loan of 81,000 so we will be making record of this in our statement of financial position over on the right hand side our next step then is to add our issued shares, reserves and long term liabilities together which gives us €260,700 and this is also known as our capital employed. You could look at it like anything below financed by is to be added together. So how your business is financed, your reserves which is your profit and loss and any long term liabilities like a loan or a mortgage are all added up together. And in this case, again, it is €260,700. And this is known as our capital employed. The key here to know if you completed the question correctly is that your capital employed should be the same as your total net assets. And this is one way to tell if you've completed it correctly. This video shows you how to complete an income statement and a statement of financial position. It's a good habit to get into to know the layout of the statement of financial position and the headings of what goes where. Also to know what entries fall into each of the headings. Hopefully this video is helpful. Use it as a study resource. Look back over it, pause it and take it step by step. And most importantly, good luck in your exams.